Hey everybody, Eric Leonard here with GBA Ethos and welcome back to part two of our college recruitment series where we will be getting into some of the most important things of how you can stand out in front of a college coach. Whether you want to play division one, two, three, or NAIA, there are certain things that you should start getting into the habit of doing if you want to play at your dream school. Now, coaches love recruiting at tournaments or showcases, so playing for a top tier club can definitely help you out. However, one of the most important ways to stand out to a college coach is by going to their ID camps. At the end of the day, we all know that you need some level of talent to play at the college level. However, if it comes down between you and another player who are tied with talent, there are definitely a few things that you can be doing to put yourself higher in the coach's mind. So with that being said, let's get into it right away. I'll see you guys soon. <sighs> Okay, so when it comes to attending college ID camps, I wanna make it easy to understand. So I'm going to break it down into three parts, before the camp, at the camp, and after the camp. Let's start with the first part, before the camp. Now, one of the most important things you need to be doing before you attend any ID college camp is research. What do I mean by that? Well, for starters, make sure you're attending college ID camps that match your top 10 college list. There's always gonna be other coaches in attendance at these camps, but at the bare minimum, make sure there's coaches from your top 10 list first. And don't let the multiple coaches at the camp go in one ear and out the other. And here's why. When I was in high school, my dream school was IU. I wanted to play at IU. It was simple as that. They were number one on my list. So I found out when their college ID camp was and I made sure to go to it. On day one of the camp, guess who I met? The head coach for Butler University. And two months later, I ended up committing to Butler. So with that being said, plan for your top 10 list, but be open to the possibility of potentially adding or even replacing schools on your list throughout the college recruitment process. One last point here. During your research, if you can't find if your school is having an ID camp, no problem. Oftentimes, a lot of college ID camps have five to six coaches in attendance. So try to do research to see if your school will be in attendance at another college ID camp. Okay, by now you've probably done the research phase, so let's get into part two, at the camp. I could easily spend an hour on different things that you wanna be doing as a player, but I'm gonna make it easy and hit my top five things that you can be doing to stand out. Number one, and one of the easiest ones, arrive early. If you see the coach setting up, Go over and introduce yourself. Now, I can promise you this will be extremely uncomfortable and probably hard, but get out of your comfort zone right away because you wanna put yourself in that coach's mind. Immediately, it shows the coach that you have character and that you're willing to put yourself out there in uncomfortable situations. Number two, be present. Oftentimes at these college ID camps, coaches will ask for volunteers for passing drills. Now, I'm sure it can be scary with 150 players there, but you can't think like that. You should have one thing on your mind, standing out. Be one of the first guys to volunteer for anything. It'll stick in the coach's mind. And the second part of this is being loud, communicate, and organize. Those are your three best friends. At the end of the day, if it comes down between you and another player in terms of talent, but you can show you're a leader on and off the field, you will get picked every single time. Number three, current players. Now what I mean by current players is before the college ID camp, do some research for some of the guys on the roster. I can promise you every single camp that I've been to, there have been players from the team that have been there to help coach and take part in the camp. This is a great opportunity to introduce yourself, make some connections. Maybe you guys are from the same hometown. Maybe you guys played for the same club or know the same coach. Do your research before and this can come in handy. You never know what one of the players will say to the coach. Number four, attire. Now this one might be odd, but 100% do not wear another college's gear to the college ID camp you're attending. As a safe bet, wear either your club gear or your high school shirt, whatever it is, but do not wear another college's gear. The reason I tell you this is because when I was going through the recruitment process, and I remember this story like it was yesterday, I won't say names, but I attended a university for their college ID camp. On day one, a player came in wearing the rival college of that university. The coach called him out in front of all 200 players and said to him verbatim, 
if I see that shirt later in the camp, I will kick you out. Now you may not agree with my next statement here, but 90% of that kid's chance of playing at that school was thrown out the window. The reason I say 90% is because there's always going to be that one kid who's extremely talented and the coach is willing to overlook his ignorance. But for the most part, that 90%, you're not going to school there. So just to play it safe, don't wear another school's gear. And the last one, number five, your play. And we can probably all agree that this is the most important one. Bottom line, you need to find ways to stand out on the field. If you're a forward, make sure you're doing your best to score goals. And if you're not scoring goals, be a part of every goal scored. If you're a midfielder, dictate the play of the game. Be clinical. Sometimes doing the easier thing at a high speed is what coaches want to see. As a defender, stand your ground, be loud, be organized. Do not get beat 1v1. And that goes in terms with goalies. Simple as that. Organize the players in front of you and keep the ball out of the back of your net. If you can play a couple different positions, show your versatility. At the end of the day, if it means coming off for a sub or playing a different position, show the coach that you want to stay on the field. This is a great way you can show how valuable you can be to a team. I can recall so many different games in college where I ended up playing over four to five different positions because of my versatility. So don't take this for granted. Don't be lazy. This is a big one here, guys. Believe it or not, coaches are watching your every move. They're watching when you don't track back on a play. You're willing to not throw your body in front of a shot. And believe it or not, they're watching your off the field stuff. Don't be goofing around, kicking balls. Pay attention to the games going on. Encourage your teammates, organize, be a leader from the sidelines. They notice all of those things. And the last point to go along with this is the all-star team. Now, I'm not sure if all college ID camps still do this, but when I went through the recruitment process, they had something called an all-star game at the end of every camp. Now, what this meant was the coaches would select 10 players to play a 5v5 game. Now, most of the times, a lot of the current players at the university would play along as well. This is a great way to stand out in front of the coaches, but also you've done enough to get to this point in their head thinking that you are one of the better players at this camp. Now, this is a great way to get yourself even closer of a chance of going to your dream school. Try to make it your goal every camp to be selected for this. Now, just because you aren't selected doesn't mean you're not going to have a good chance of going to the school. I'm not even sure if they still do this, but from personal experience, this is a great way to stand out to any college coach. Okay, and then the last part, after the camp. Make sure you go up and shake every one of the coaches' hands, the schools you know and even the schools you don't know. This is a great sign of respect, and I want to give you guys a couple tips on how to do this. Don't be the first guy to go because there's going to be a rush of people following you. Try to find a gap where you can maybe have a minute or two to talk to the coach. And when you do, make sure to have a statement ready. Here's an example. Hi coach, Eric Leonard here. I really enjoyed the camp. As I head into the rest of my club season for Soccer's FC Chicago, is there anything I can focus on to improve my game and give myself the best chance to play for you? Notice I mentioned who I played for. There's going to be a lot of players trying to get two or three spots on a team. You want to give the coach as much information about you so they can remember who you are. By telling the coach you want to play at their school, you give them an opportunity to respond to you. Now, this is where you need to be listening very intently. If the coach responds by telling you specific things they want you to work on and that they want their current players to do as well, well then great, go and work on them. There's hundreds of players at every college ID camp. You can never really tell a coach's true intentions until you send them a follow-up email. And that's what we're going to get into our next part of after the camp. After you've done everything you can do to stand out at your college ID camp, you must send a follow-up email. This is a great way to keep the line of communication open between you and the coaching staff and to keep you fresh on their brain. Let's go over an example of something I would say after I just finished a college ID camp. Hi coach, my name is Eric Leonard and I just wanted to say thank you for everything today. I thought your comment you made earlier about switching the field to find the weak side was spot on. I look forward to following you guys during your season. I will definitely make sure to working on turning and checking over my shoulder. Here's an upcoming list of my games slash tournaments slash showcases for club or high school. 
I've attached my resume for you as well. Thank you for your time. Best, Eric Leonard. Now notice I said a couple things in my email after the camp. I touched on specific things that the coach brought up during the ID camp. This is a great way to show the coach that you are paying attention and you are in fact listening. After your conversation, if the coach did tell you things to work on, this is a great way to follow up with them and tell them that you understand the things you need to work on and you will make sure you dedicate time to those things. And the last part of your email should include a list of upcoming games, tournaments, or showcases for your club or high school. The reason I say put a list is because if you put just one date, they might not be able to make it. But if you put a handful of games, they can pick one that works with their schedule. All right, guys, we covered a lot of things in a short amount of time. Remember the three parts of how to stand out in front of a college coach to give yourself the best chance of going to your dream school. Remember, you've got to do the research before the camp. Know the coaches who are coming to your camp and make sure you find out before you go. The second part, what you're doing at the camp to stand out. Remember the five points that we hit. Number one, arriving early to every camp. Number two, be present, be focused and show the coach you're paying attention. If you need to volunteer, be that person. Number three, do research on current players that are there. You never know what a connection could lead to. Number four, make sure you're wearing the right attire and do not wear another college's gear. And the last one, and probably the most important one, number five, your play. Find ways to stand out whatever position you guys play. And then don't forget about part three after the camp, sending up the follow-up email, talking to the coaches after. Make sure you leave a lasting impression in their brain. At the end of the day, guys, I'm not saying this is a 100% success rate, that if you follow these steps, you will go to your dream school. But what I can tell you is I've been to a ton of college ID camps. I have friends who've been to a ton of college ID camps. We've been through the college recruitment process, and these are the things that worked. If you're tied with talents between another player, use these ideas to help get you ahead of the other player in the coach's mind. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you took something away from it that you can apply to your journey. Listen, guys, this was part two of the college recruitment series. Our next video next week will be our third and final video of the series, which will focus on how to deal with the scholarship conversations and the financial need aspect. I can't wait to get into it. I'll see you guys next week. As always, stay focused, stay in the grind, and I'll see you guys soon.